Hi there, this is Nick, and in this video we're going to be doing a quick walkthrough of some of the Unix and terminal features that you're going to be interfacing with on assignment 2 for CS107. In particular, we're going to talk about something called environment variables. So I'm logged into Myth here, and I first want to show you what environment variables are. Environment variables are variables that are inside your terminal or shell. They're just like variables in a program that you might write, where they have a name and a value, you can get their value, you can set their value, and these environment variables that live inside your terminal session are useful because it itself uses them to know how to execute commands. For instance, the terminal looks at your environment variables to know where to look to execute certain programs. And on top of that, you can actually access the values of environment variables in your C programs to change your program behavior depending on the values of the variables. So how do you actually see what the variables, the environment variables are in your terminal session? Well, there's a special command you can execute called print env for print environment. And if you hit enter, it'll show you all of the environment variables that are currently set and their values. So for instance, you can see that my user environment variable is set to Tricoli. My home environment variable is set to this path right here. And there are a variety of other environment variables as well that are set. Now, you can also use the print env command to print out the value of just a specific variable or variables that you're looking at. So you can say print env and then the name of an environment variable like user and it will just print out the value of that environment variable. You can also specify multiple, such as user, home, and path, and it will print out all three of those. So as I mentioned earlier, the values of these environment variables are used for the terminal or the shell to know how to execute certain programs, and you can actually write C programs that use the values of these environment variables. For instance, you could write a program that looks at the user environment variable. The user variable is actually set to be your SUNET ID when you log into the Myth Machines. So you could write a C program that looks at the user environment variable and customizes behavior of the program depending on the value of that variable. So let's see how we might use environment variables in our programs. I'm going to uh, go into a directory here and I'm going to open a file that's empty for now called envvariables.c. Now in this file, I just have a basic empty C program. Now up until now, we've had two parameters to our main function. One is the number of command line arguments that we have been passed, and the other is those command line arguments as an array of strings. It turns out that there's actually a third parameter that you can optionally accept in your main function, which is the value of the environment variables when your program is executed. So the way that you would add this parameter, if you'd like to get this information, is you add a third parameter, which is const car star envp. envp is an array of strings, just like argv, and it's an array of strings that stores all the contents of the environment variables. So let's print out the contents of this array to see what's inside. Now you'll notice that we don't have the count of the number of elements in this array like we do for argv with argc. The way that we know how many entries are in this array is we loop through the array until we get to an entry that is null. This marks the end of the array. So we can loop over the environment variables just by saying for int i equals zero, i let, or sorry, envp i doesn't equal null. This is the special case, i plus plus. What this says is loop where i starts at zero, keep looping until the environment variable entry at index i is null. Once it's null, we stop and increment i at each step. And inside this for loop, we're just going to print out the value of this entry. Okay, so let's save this and let's see what this program does. So we're gonna make, I'm going to run the env variables program. And so you can see it prints out one entry per line. So this is one string in the envp array. This is a second string, this is a third string, and so forth. So you can see that each entry is name, 
of the environment variable equals and then the value. So these are combined into one string uh, inside each index in the array. OK, great. So this is useful to get the contents, but it might take a little bit of string processing to separate out, for instance, uh, each of these strings, for example, to get the variable name and the variable value. So the way that you can separate this out, if we go back into our program, is using a function that you will actually write on assignment 2. This function is called get env value. What it does is it takes in an array of environment variables, just like envp, and it takes in the name of one of those environment variables, and it gives back the value of that in this environment variables array. So for instance, if I go back to my main terminal window, if we call env or get env value on this array of environment variables right here, and we pass in the parameter user, we should get back the string Tricoli. It's a way to split and get just the value of a specified environment variable. So in our program, how would we use this function that you're going to write? Well, let's say we want to get the value of the user environment variable to customize behavior based on who's running this program. Well, what we can do is we can say username equals get env value, envp, and then user. Again, what this function will do, which you will write, is it goes through this envp array and it looks for the value of the user environment variable and returns it if it is there. If it's not there, it returns null. So we can say if username doesn't equal null, then we know that there is a user environment variable set with a value. And so we can print out some unique behavior. For instance, we can print out hello and then say hello to the user. I'm just adding some extra lines here so we can see it clearly. And I'll print out the username. So what this does is it will print out whoever the user is that is running this program based on the value of their user environment variable. So let's save this. And I will go back here and I will make again. And I'm going to run it. And you'll notice that, again, we print out the values of uh, the names and values of all the environment variables. And then we have our custom message, which says, hello, Tricoli. So in this case, because I'm on the Myth Machines logged in as myself, it prints out uh, a message for me. But if you try running a program just like this, it would print out a welcome message for you because your user environment variable is different from mine. Now, that's how environment variables can be used in your programs. One other handy trick about environment variables is it's possible to change environment variables if you like. In particular, there's a program called env. What env does is it lets you temporarily modify your environment variables just during the run of the next program. So what I mean by this is let's say I want to test my um, environment variables program, just like I ran a minute ago. Except now the only way I can run it is unless I have somebody else log in and test it for me, it's always going to print out my username. So maybe I would like to change the user environment variables value to something else. What I can do is before the command to execute environment variables, I can write env. And then I can write the names of the environment variables and values that I would like to change just for this execution of this program. So I can say user equals other user, for instance. What this does is it says just for this next time that I run this command right here, please change the user environment variable to have this other user value. So it will inherit all of the values up here, and then it will change this environment variable, again, just for the run of this program. So if I hit Enter, you can see that now, when it prints out the values of the environment variables, it prints out user as being equal to other user. And it prints out a welcome message for other user instead of my sunet. But if I run the just the regular command, a second time, you can see that it doesn't change those environment variables forever. It just changes them for that one execution of the program. So this is useful for testing the values of environment variables that you might want to change when running your programs. Next, I want to talk about one additional Unix command and feature that will be useful to know for the last part of assignment two. 
and that is the which command. Now, for some background, when you run a Unix command like ls, ls is actually an executable program, just like executable programs that you might make in CS107. There's an executable program for ls somewhere on your machine, and when you type the ls command, the terminal knows where to look to find the ls executable to actually run. What the which command does is it tells you where that executable lives. So for instance, if I type which ls, it says the executable for the ls command lives in slash bin slash ls. Now, how did the terminal know to look here? Well, what it does is it uses one of our environment variables. Specifically, it uses the path environment variable. So let's print out just the path environment variable by saying print env path. And you can see path looks like a really long string of file paths. What this is, is it is a colon delimited list of file paths. Specifically, it has user local s bin, or at least my path has user local s bin, and then user local bin, and then user s bin, user bin, so on and so forth. So the commas just act as delimiters between the different paths in my path environment variable. Now what this environment variable is used for is when I type a command like ls, what the terminal does is it goes through each of these paths in my path variable and searches for the ls executable. So for instance, when I type ls, it first goes to user local s bin to look for the ls executable. If it doesn't find it, then it goes to user local bin, then it goes to user s bin, and so on and so forth until it finds the executable for the ls command. And so that's how ultimately it finds the ls command lives at slash bin slash ls. You're actually going to be implementing your own version of the which command, which performs the same search, but just prints out where the executable was found on the system by going through every path in the path environment variable until it finds the executable. So as another example, I can type which Python, and if I hit enter, you can see that it performs this search and it found the executable for the Python command in slash user slash bin slash Python. So that was information about Unix commands and background that you'll need to work on CS107 Assignment 2. Thanks for watching.